Did you know that today is Loyalty Day? Yes, May 1st of every year is a federally recognized US holiday called Loyalty Day, but almost nobody knows about it. The official stated purpose of Loyalty Day is, quote, for the reaffirmation of loyalty to the United States and for the recognition of the heritage of American freedom. As weird as this might be, the strangest thing about Loyalty Day is that it's basically a fake holiday. It was invented solely for the purpose of hiding the real May 1st holiday, a socialist holiday called International Workers' Day, or May Day. Here's what happened. On May 1st of every year, people in basically every country in the world celebrate International Workers' Day. It's a holiday that celebrates how the working class produces the wealth of society and how it has to fight tooth and nail against the capitalist system for the basic rights we take for granted today. The first May Day was inspired by the fight for the eight-hour workday. Nowadays, we tend to take for granted that most workplaces only expect us to work for eight hours. But for large parts of the 18th and 19th century, it was actually more common for people to work 10 hours a day, or 11 hours a day, or even 12 hours a day. On top of that, payback then was really low. So low that a significant number of families needed their children to work just to make ends meet. The work was also incredibly dangerous. Companies had no responsibility to protect their workers, and people dying on the job was just thought of as the way things were. Basically, if you were a worker back then, you had no rights. You were essentially your employer's property, and he could do whatever he wanted to you just because he paid you a few pennies an hour. In 1884, a convention of labor unions in the United States and Canada decided to respond to these awful working conditions and declared that on May 1st, all workers and labor unions should hold demonstrations to say, we want an eight-hour workday now. And that's exactly what they did. On May 1st, 1886, 500,000 workers across the U.S. demonstrated. In Chicago in particular, the demonstrations were so strong that 65,000 workers went on strike for days, well into May 3rd. Frustrated that their workers were refusing to work, Chicago industrialists hired outside workers to replace their striking workers. These outside workers, who are also known as scabs, were trying to leave the McCormick Reaper Works plant when the striking workers confronted them and basically called them out for helping the capitalists break the workers' strike. A fight ensued and the police opened fire on the striking workers, killing four of them. In response to the killings, the striking Chicago workers organized a rally for the next day in Haymarket Square. 3,000 people attended that rally. As the rally was ending, the police ordered the workers to disperse, and then someone in the crowd responded by throwing a bomb. The police responded to the bomb by shooting the protesters, and the police ended up wounding 200 people and killing several. Hundreds of workers were arrested, and eight radical labor leaders were put on trial. All eight were convicted, and of the eight, four were hanged and two were sentenced to life in prison. After the executions, the government attacked labor leaders and terrorized the growing movement. But a few years later, the labor movement rebounded. There was an outpouring of national and international solidarity with the Haymarket protesters, and the ones who died were being considered martyrs. In 1890, May 1st was declared International Workers' Day. So where does Loyalty Day fit into this? Well, the first Loyalty Day was declared in 1921, just four years after the first socialist revolution in the world, the Russian Revolution. Now, it's impossible to understate just how much the Russian Revolution scared the capitalist classes because this was basically an event where a bunch of peasants and factory workers rose up and kicked industrialists, bankers, and aristocrats out of power. So when the rich capitalists in other countries saw what was happening in Russia, they thought that the poor people in their own countries were going to do the same thing. So when the socialists seized power in Russia, 14 capitalist countries, many of which were actually at war with each other at the time, put aside all of their differences to invade Russia just to stop this socialist revolution. As Winston Churchill put it, the goal was to, quote, strangle the Bolshevik baby in its crib. On top of this, these countries also unleashed a wave of police repression against socialists in their own countries. After the Russian Revolution, the United States enters this period known as the First Red Scare. During this time, it was basically illegal to be a socialist. The government passed a law called the 1918 Sedition Act, which made it a crime to criticize the government at the threat of deportation. Thousands of people were arrested just for being sympathetic to socialism or even for just being union leaders. The attorney general at the time famously warned that there were 300,000 communists hiding in the United States, something he offered no proof for. The insurrection never happened, but in this crazed state of anti-communist frenzy, the U.S. declared that May 1st would from then on out be known as Loyalty Day, and the first Loyalty Day was celebrated on May 1st, 1921. 
The capitalist class fears May Day because historically, radical holidays like May Day have led to much larger events like revolutions. In 1905, May Day strikes in Russia breathed life back into the labor movement and spread this revolutionary sentiment that would lead to the 1905 revolution in Russia that ended Tsarist absolutism. On International Women's Day, another socialist holiday, Tens of thousands of Russian women marched in the streets against war and poverty, catalyzing the February Revolution of 1917, the revolution that preceded the Socialist October Revolution that took place later that year. So Loyalty Day was basically a way of erasing this history and denying us this day that historically we've used to express how much we hate capitalism. The ironic thing about all this is that basically every country in the world has massive demonstrations for May Day and International Women's Day except for the United States, the country that started both of these holidays. Americans tend to get stereotyped as these super pro-capitalist people that are all selfish or that we all want to be millionaires, but actually we started two of the most wide celebrated radical holidays in the world, and the history of socialism in this country is as deep as any other. A lot of people that were taught about in school, like Martin Luther King, Helen Keller, Albert Einstein, were all socialists. They don't tell us this because then we might not think socialism is all that bad, but yes, these people, on top of everything else they did, supported socialism. While you almost never hear about it, Loyalty Day is actually still celebrated every single year. Every year, the president issues a proclamation proclaiming that May 1st is Loyalty Day. In fact, Joe Biden has already done that for May 1st this year. And while you might feel like rolling your eyes at that, no amount of proclamations will change the fact that May 1st is International Workers' Day. Furthermore, no amount of calls for loyalty will change the fact that capitalism has created a world where five billionaires own more than the poorest four billion people in the world combined, where half of Americans are in or near poverty while billionaires are doubling and tripling their wealth. Loyalty Day doesn't change the fact that capitalism can't even solve the most basic problems, like feeding and housing everyone. The capitalist class hides May Day from us because it reminds us that the rule of billionaires in society can only exist as long as the workers feel atomized and divided. As soon as the working class comes together and makes a conscious decision to withdraw their labor, society shuts down. All of the billionaires that seemed all powerful just become regular people. So the thrust of International Workers' Day has always been that it's workers, not CEOs that make the trains run, that prepare the food, that keep the lights on. And if that's the case, workers can continue to run society without these parasitic billionaires taking all the wealth we create. Happy Loyalty Day from Breakthrough News. We hope you've all had the time today to express your loyalty to McDonald's Corporation, Bank of America, the New York Stock Exchange, you know, all the people that make our country run. But if you've been having trouble finding the holiday spirit like I have, you can show your loyalty by becoming a patron of Breakthrough News. You guys know we work really hard to get this content to you, almost all of which is free. But unfortunately, producing this content is not free, and it costs money to get our reporters places like Haiti and Brazil and Ethiopia. So if you would consider throwing a few bucks a month to us, it would go a really long way. There's several options, so you could pay like $25 a month, which comes out to 83 cents a day, or you could do five bucks a month, which comes out to 16 cents a day. And patrons do get some exclusive content, so you should go to BreakthroughNews.org, follow the Patreon link, and then check out our Patreon and see what you can get for the different subscription tiers. But in all seriousness, happy International Workers' Day from Breakthrough News. Have a great day.